Ikhwani, when you want to sin and when you want to do something wrong, Ikhwani, remember the one that owns everything can see you. فَلَا تَجَعَلْ don't, let, don't make Allah أَقْبَحُ النَّاظِرِينَ إِلَيْكِ When you lie, when you trick, when you fall, when you speak wrong, when you act against your religion, don't make Allah the one that watches, watch, watches and looks at the worst of things. You, you respect others and you wouldn't want them to see it. But when it comes to Allah, you do. When who's better than Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an? Abu Bakr used to say to the people, Istahyu min Allah. Be shy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fa inni wallahi astahyi min Allah. I feel shy of Allah. That when I go to do my call of nature, Abu Bakr Siddiq, when I go to do my call of nature, wallahi, I veil my face. I put niqab on. Haya'a min Allah. Because I'm very shy of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, the great companion he was, he said, Wallahi, maqtasaltu qa'iman. I never ever, I never had a bath standing up, ever. I mean, I never straightened my back. I never straightened my back. Why? Abu Musa al-Ash'ari was said, he always used to have a bath sitting down, and he would have, have it in a dark place. Why? Because he was shy of Allah. He didn't want Allah to see his aura. He didn't want to show Allah this. Haya. Ikhwani, the shyness of theirs reached an extent that the companions they came to the Messenger sallallahu one time and they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, advise me, a man said. He said, Oh Sini Ya Rasulullah, give me an advice. You know what the Messenger sallallahu said to him? He said, Istahyu min Allah. Be shy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kama tastahyi min rajulin salih min bani qawmik. Be shy of Allah. The way you would be shy of Allah, a righteous man of your best of the people that you're from. If you see a person in your righteous people that you're from, you will never dare to do that in front of him. Be shy of Allah as much as you see that. No one would ever dare. Think of the best person as the most noblest in your eyes and try to, to picture yourself in front of that person. How would you deal with it? You will never dare to do that. Then remember, don't make Allah the one that you belittle more than that person. The reality, and this is the harsh reality that Ummah today we live in. And all of this comes back to lack of understanding of what these ayat and these verses mean. Ikhwani, the Sahabas were not metals and robots. The Sahaba, Ridwanullah, Al-Majma'in, were Ummah. Every verse they looked at it and they sat down. And they made it enter their body and their minds and their hearts. And they digested it as it was. They lived by a day. They lived by it in morning. They lived by afternoon and at night before they slept they lived by this. It was a, it was a principle that was qa'im forever to be. And you as a person have to be like that. Fatiha ikhwan is a surah azimah. It's one of the biggest surahs in the Quran. If it wasn't, Allah would have not said to his Prophet, وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ We gave you the seven that repeats itself. وَالْقُرْآنِ الْعَظِيمِ And the great noble Quran. Surah Al-Fatiha. Just by itself if you sit next to it and and you understand it. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> says, Allah is the king. And he's gonna be tasafa bisifatil mulk. Allah has become and has gained the description of being a king. Allah is the only one that orders. And is the only one that when he prohibits. Naam. Allah is the one who rewards and he's the one who punishes. Look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does he do? He orders you to do this. You have to do it. But you know what the difference between Allah and others are? Allah has given you مَوْعِدًا لَا نُخْلِفُ أَنْتَ وَلَا نَأَحْنُ مَكَانَ السُّوَى A promise that no one can disagree with. You can't know with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَاعَةً وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ A time that has been barricaded, It's timed out for you. That's the day you're going to come to him. Whereas other kings, what do they do? You do it, they catch you. They get, grab you for what you did straight away. Sahih. Allah says subhanahu wa ta'ala سَنَسْتَدْرِجُهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And this is one thing you have to know. If you disobey Allah's orders and His commands and the prohibitions of that which He prohibited you from and you fall into it, remember one thing. What do you remember? That you're one of two. Either Allah punishes you for it in this earth and hereafter you come with nothing on your scale. Or Allah gives you a great life in this world. You still enjoy yourself with even though you're sinning. But that's the worst of all. That's the worst of the all. All. Why? Allah says in the Quran, فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ 
حتى إذا فرحوا بما أوتوا أخذناهم بغتة فإذا هم مبلسون when they forgot what they did and they started enjoying themselves they started doing every crime Allah he said we open all doors for them and this is one of the ways you're doing something wrong but you're getting what you wanted so you think whoa this is I'm not I'm, I'm actually doing wrong doors open for you you're sinning you're sitting in a room watching movies internet brothers watching things that Allah hasn't prohibited Allah hasn't allowed for them on television or on, on the internet sisters doing things on the internet that Allah hasn't allowed for them living double lives three li lives four lives different lives four or five Facebooks with different names different pictures she wears niqab outside but inside she's wearing something else the brother he thought salah masjid you find him but when it comes to the internet and he's at home by himself he knows nobody can see him has that person really understood that Allah he's going to come to Allah Allah's commandment has he understood that wa'amir of Allah Allah he hasn't has he understood the nawahi the things that Allah has prohibited from him now Allah hasn't when this is the biggest problem that we live the people haven't taken everything into their hearts Wallahi if you did Wallahi I swear by Allah's name if you really believe all of this in which you hear your mind and your concept and the way you live will be different if somebody was to put a camera into your room they would see you more pious than you are when you're with the people your family members who are around and see you by yourself when you're not around they will see a different life in you that, but the problem is, Ikhwani, is there's no connection between the heart and that which is being taken into the heart mind. This dars and this reminder, you go home. You go, take it home as a knowledge, as a concept. But you don't take it as a... Put it in your heart and take it into implementation. It's the biggest mushkila we find. See, people now taking all of this, they go home. Ten months later, years later, they're still in the same mushkila. Where's all of this gone? 